Hey everybody, it's the Trout. Hope you're having a great day. You know, music has such a huge influence on us. At least it does on me. That's one of the reasons I put this channel together and also the fact that I've been playing guitar for decades with several different bands. But the one artist that made the most impact on me was Jimi Hendrix. When I heard Electric Ladyland album and I heard Voodoo Child's Light Return, I said, man, I got to get me a wall pedal and maybe one day have a double stack of Marshalls to be able to play in front of. But today's guest, Ed, a wonderfully talented guitarist out of Amsterdam, talks about how one album changed his life forever. It's this album right here, and that's Unplugged by Eric Clapton, released 30 years ago. And now he's celebrating the release by going out with his band in the Netherlands and beyond and performing this wonderful album, note for note, to sell out crowds. So it's interesting to note that just one album changed his career. So Ed will be talking about that in just a moment. But before we get to Ed's story, please like this video if you like it. Please subscribe to my channel. It makes my life better and it also helps me out a lot. And I want to continue to provide great interviews from wonderful, talented artists across the planet. So up next, Ed talking about how Eric Clapton and one album changed his career path forever. And you know, that's next on The Trout Show. Did you start playing when you were a kid? Yeah. And then just sure. lost interest in it and just kind of went, no, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. What kind of, what happened there? Yeah, that was when I, when I went into puberty. It's like the, the, the moment in time when you, you start getting interested in other things like uh, hanging outside with friends, uh, trying to smoke illegally, you know, <laughs> those kinds of things yeah. that you do uh, yeah. as a young guy. And, yeah. and the guitar just kind of disappeared out of my life. And then 30 years ago, when I turned like 13, I heard Clapton on the radio with Layla. And that really Are changed. Are you talking about the one, the one that you're doing now live? Yeah, the it? unplugged version. Yeah, Okay, yeah, the unplugged yeah. version, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that set something off in me. It's like, ah, so that is what you also can do with an acoustic guitar. Because before that point, um, I was into like classical playing, you know, okay. Spanish, uh, flamingo yeah. style. And that really did you have did, a, did you have a nylon string guitar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so you had a true classical guitar. Okay. Yeah, so I I was was like getting getting to learn the guitar in a classical way, and that that wasn't just cutting it for me. And when I heard Layla, I was like, okay, what is this? It's like, it's different. And then my guitar teacher said, yeah, that's like bluesy. I was like, okay, teach me that, you know? <laughs> and and that was the moment when I was like, okay, the guitar and me, I think we're, we're good again. And, and so, well, so then you started playing more. Of course you were yeah. still, you're still a kid. I'm weren't you kid, yeah. yeah you're still 30 years ago yeah um i, I wish i could say i was a kid then i was <laughs> 30 years ago but i wasn't anyway um and then you 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 progressed you know through your whole life so to speak when did you start getting serious about music as a as a full-time kind of thing that you wanted to do yeah the the, the first uh, time for me when when it really got serious was when I turned like 18 or something like that. That was the first time I found like-minded people to, to get into a band with, because before that time I tried to get with, try to find people around me to, to start a band. But everybody right. at that time uh, was like into Nirvana, Pearl Jam. That's right. You know, like it was the grunge era. It's like the yeah. early Seattle 90s. era. Seattle. Yeah. yeah. Seattle. Everyone was wearing Nirvana shirts, and I was really into Hendrix, Clapton. So I was I was in a totally different kind of kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. And when I turned eighteen, I, f I found this this place, uh, oh, so uh, this kind of bar uh, where where I lived, where like minded people came and people who played music and rehearsed there with bands. And I just started hanging out there and uh, found finding other people to to play with, and that. That was the moment it really took off. They already started to, uh, to, to gig uh, around town um, and throughout the Netherlands. And it was the first time I really thought like, okay, 
I think I think I really want this. I want to do this for the rest of my life. Actually, <laughs> uh, it was also the, the time when I, I quit school. I got my degree, and I was like, okay, I'm on this crossroad now. What am I going to do? Am I going to pursue a career in music, or am I going to do another study or do something else? Right. I, I choose mu I choose music. Yeah. When you started um, the the uh, the unplugged version that you're doing now. How many tunes are, how long is the concert? How many songs do you play the whole album or do you put some of your own stuff in there? Um, I put only one song of myself in there on the okay. end. Like at the end of the show, it's, it, 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 uh, it, it wraps it up, you know, and, but it's an, it's an homage. It's an homage to the, the entire album. So we play every, every song. Uh, yeah, and, and try to honor it as much as I can, as we can, because you know, when I play Layla, uh, I want to play the solo exactly as he did. Because oh, wow. it's, in my, it's in my memory right. like that. Yeah. I want to honor it. Yeah. I don't want to make it something new uh, because it's, it's, it's like a record. It's, the, 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 uh, it's printed in my memory, in my musical memory. So um, I try to honor it, to, uh, honor it as much as I can. Um, and with my own music... I, when I do a solo, I always improvise. So uh, it's like me. I do the same thing. Yeah, it's 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 for me. It's it's a different kind of thing now, uh, playing these songs over and over again in exactly the same order. And I like the the challenge of that because I want to come as close as I can to his type of playing. Um, yeah, you know that's so. To come back at what you were saying about the the, the music industry and and how it is changing. I think young people, uh, talking like about people age 18 or something. Right. Uh, I think young people always have been into like the pop game. Yeah. What is now popular. And yes. 40, 50 years ago, it was the Beatles. Yep. And it has evolved. Um, it, 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 it stayed with the people who were 18, 20 at that time. And it progressed along the lines of life with, with them. So... When I was 13, Clapton brought out Unplugged. And for me, it was the formative years of my, my, my life. Sure. And I took that, all, uh, that album with me, um, even though Clapton was at that time, I think, 47. Um, what is so, he, 76 you know, now, 77? Yeah, yeah he, he's, uh, he's 77 at this, yeah. uh, this moment. Yeah. So, you know, I think um, it's great to play it again because what he did with Unplugged was honoring his heroes like uh, big bill brunzi uh, t-bone walker uh, yeah uh, you know all, all those uh, those uh, those kind of guys and and i'm like uh, robert johnson yeah and robert like, johnson hey, sure by playing it again now i hope i hope there are young people in the audience and there there are there are young people in the audience not as much there are also uh, people uh, my age and older you know mm -hmm. people who are 60 70 at this point who want to like have a good time listening back to to that album and and the stories behind that album but if i can only reach one youngster hmm. like wow this yeah. is so cool i have to find out who this guy is yeah that, that's how we keep the music alive and well also with with acoustic music and that i think is something um the music industry underestimates because there's nothing as pure as just an just a guitar just no. a guitar no amplifiers just your voice and your hands yeah and that really it it resonates with people um and and you see on spotify they they do still understand it a bit because if there's a big hit they always make an acoustic version <laughs> out of it you know because yeah. they know there's some money there to, to collect yeah. but yeah it, it yeah it, you know, the thing about that album, though, as a musician myself, and I've been playing over 50 years, is that's not a simple album to play. No. I mean, the chord pad, I mean, what's the one that my favorite is? Uh, one of my favorites is uh, Lonely, Lonely Stranger. Stranger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. that's got some weird, weird. Yeah. Uh, I learned how to play it. I didn't play it in my band. Yeah. yeah. It's got some weird chord patterns in it. Yeah. Yeah. 
you here. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you're one, three, one, four, five. It's not like no, that. No, no, no. No, it's, it's and, and so he always. It's interesting about Eric Clapton. Yeah. Was he's a pentatonic guy? That's the way he plays most of his leads. Yeah. Him and I and you are all the same. And this is this came from uh, um, uh, Glenn. I can't remember his first name. The producer that does a lot of it. Glenn Johns. Glenn Johns. Yeah. Who said asking him to do a repeat of a solo is never going to happen because <laughs> he never plays the same thing twice. Yeah. And and when we played it, we started playing before the band broke up, and we started playing. I said we're going to do start at the '60s and kind of move up through the, the the through the decades, and we were doing White Room and stuff like that. It's all pentatonic, so I try to stay as close as possible, but I I can't. I'm one of these guys. that's like I'm not going to play the lead exactly like that, but that's just me. So, yeah. you know, what I think is interesting is first off. His longevity. I mean, you're you're taking a guy that's been around for. I mean, what what do people say when they meet him? I mean, what what would you say to Eric Clapton? Gee, you're really good. I mean, there's, I mean, it's like. I think the only thing I would say is thank you. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. I thank mean, you. my other my other favorite is I'm a big Jeff Beck fan. Mm, you know, yeah. I'm a huge Jeff Beck fan, and and it's like, wow, how do you do that stuff? I mean, you know. My biggest, no, it's not a fear, but you know, eventually these people won't be around anymore. No. I'm, I grew up playing blues. I'm a blues guy. I'm, a, I'm from Texas, so I play a lot of Texas blues. But, you know, all the great blues guys, they're almost all gone. Buddy, buddy guy now is 82, 83. And, and so when I hear a new person coming up to that genre, I'm kind of like you. It's like, oh, good. Somebody else is coming in. Yeah. But, but yeah. it's historically, it's going to, it's changed because. We don't have black Southern performers that grew up chopping cotton anymore. That exactly. doesn't exist anymore. They're not going to go to a juke joint box, you know, juke joint place and play. That doesn't exist anymore. So it's just more of learning the pure purity of it. And you think about people like Stevie Ray, he's been gone 30 years. He died wow. in 1990. Yeah. And, yeah. and my biggest thing is when I meet young people and I mention something to them about you sound like fill in the blanks and they go, who's that? Yeah. And I've always been one that, that studied, not studied, but understood kind of the whole history of guitar playing. Yeah. I mean, when I first started playing as a kid, I used to listen to Andre Segovia records and go, how does he do that? Why do you sound like three people playing? How does he, you know, yeah. and, you know, and so, and, and watch that change as the decades rolled by. And I remember when I picked up my guitar when I was, I think I started playing when I was 12 and Beatles were popular, very popular then. And I thought, how do they make, how do they do a bar chord? I mean, because, yeah. you know, as a new player, you don't get it. Hmm. And I remember trying to play an F chord because you got to press down on two strings. It took me forever. And now that, you know, that's just second nature to me now. But so I am impressed by the fact that you can play the whole thing. And, <laughs> and how many, how many is in the band? Four of you in the band? Yeah, we're with four, and that's we, we we actually we have one guy who plays guitar and bass guitar. Okay, uh, he he changed it. It depends on the song because right you now times are tough. You know, it's uh, post COVID era. Uh, people are finding it hard to to come back to the theaters. I was going to ask so, you how that's going over there. Yeah, I, I I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, and I don't know how it is in the U.S. But what we see here is like the very popular stuff, like where the kids go to. Uh, that is all sold out, but if it's something a little bit more, um, if it's different, like like what I'm doing or uh, other singer songwriters are doing a theater tour, um, you, you see that the venues aren't packed, to put it mildly. And, right. and I'm very fortunate at the moment that people are finding their way uh, to our show, but not as much as I hope to, yeah. as I'd hope. Uh, so where normally I, uh, when I'm at a venue where I'm normally sold out, mm -hmm. I'm like at three quarters. So yeah. there, there's there's a substantial part of the audience missing, and I don't know where they are. The the, the thing is, or they're scared, still scared to go out, COVID wise. Right. Or it's like with the the the, the high prices over That's here. That's what I was going to say. That could be the other contributing yeah, yeah. factor. Rick, what I think is is happening now because. Normally, normally, what happened since the 60s is that we went through all kinds of waves 
like the, the, the Beatles, then the 70s, prog rock, 80s, oh wow, yeah. synthesizers, wow, drum machines, the 90s, back to like the grunge era. And now I think we almost, we've been everywhere. So we're now like... Um, oh, I see what you're saying. You know, you know you've gone the saying. whole circle now. There's not yeah, any place to the whole, circle, the whole circle. There's nothing much left to explore other than do it all over again with your own sauce over it, you know? Yeah. Like your own take on like the, 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 the grunge era. Right. Or your own take on the Hendrix uh, or Clapton era, you know? And yeah. and finding people who like that. And that's, I think, the, 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 so the blessings of modern day and age with YouTube, with social media. It has mm -hmm. a lot of bad things about it, which we can see all around the world at this moment. But I think for music, it has been, it's a liberation. You can you can put anything out there. Like I did this interview with Chuck Lavelle. It's it's been been seen by by thousands of people, and that's also part of the reason that we are talking now. You know, it's my interest in that old album yeah. thirty years ago, and yeah. uh, we can connect connect th through music, and uh, that's a thing that wasn't possible thirty years ago because no. that that time. MTV was king and they decided what was popular and now it's it's far more dem democratic. You, you've taken your love to another level, I think, because really what got me was this is the one reason I reached out for you is when you talk to Andrew Fairweather Lowe yeah. and I was and I'm going like, OK, how do you get a hold of these guys? I mean, do you just reach out to them or I mean, it's like Chuck, it takes a while because I my one of my favorite songs that he did was with Clapton. Mm, yeah. The Gin House Blues thing. I really yeah. love I love that too. And I followed him. I mean, you look at him, he played on uh, you know, the Unplugged album. And you look at him then and you look at him now, 30 years later, he looks a lot different. Wow. He does. Yeah. I mean his his whole styling changed. Yeah. So I ran across you and I thought, dang, you're talking to Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll tell you how that came about. I was uh, asked to play on a on a radio show uh, on a Sunday night, and uh, that's a, that's a, a national thing, a national radio station, Radio One, as it's called. And right. they asked me if I would come over to the studio and play a couple of songs. And I, I'm right. I'm I'm on my way. I was sitting there, and there was this uh, guy who was the, the the owner of a big venue. In that, in that city, because it was recorded locally in, in a town called Zoetermeer. And uh, the guy talked about the venue on the show, and I was, like, waiting. And he heard me uh, talking about my Clapton tour. Right. And after the show, he came to me. He's like, Andy Fairweather Lowe is coming to play in my venue in June. I'm like, wow, that is cool. He's like, would you do his support act? I'm like... <laughs> Damn sure, damn right. And I was right like, right place at the right time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a total coincidence because at that t at that time I didn't have any new music out, and otherwise, why would I play a radio show to promote new music? Right. But I was like, yeah, they asked me because they thought I was born in Zoetermeer in this uh -huh. town. And they they and when they do that show, they um they get all local people from that town to do stuff. So I was like, I'm not born there. I was born half an hour uh, west of that, that right. town. But hey, if you want me on there, I'll, I'm, I'm on. from Zutamir. I'm on, yeah, I'm from Zutamir, yeah. definitely. So th it was a total coincidence. And I was like, talking to the guy, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I've got this podcast and I'm doing this theater show. Can I talk to him for my podcast? He was, he, like, the, he was the guy booking the ba his yeah. band? He was kind of yeah, the promoter was, or, or the whatever. Yeah, he yeah. was the, 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 the owner of the venue. Okay, so he, so he me, yeah. He yeah. brought me in touch with, with the, the promoter, the Dutch promoter. He talked to the manager of Andy, and they were like, okay, podcast, cool, but what time? And uh, 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 difficult, difficult. It was like, let's do it just before, just whenever he wants. It's like, okay, got a time slot for, for like 30 minutes. I put I took my cameras with me, uh, made, a, made a nice setup. And we talked for for an hour, and we had to quit because I had to do the sound check. <laughs> you can hear that in the end. That's like, just oh, the opposite of what you think it's going to be, right? He would yeah. say, "I gotta go," and you're going, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I got to go. Hey, Andy, I got to <laughs> do the sound check. <laughs> and it was really great. He, he he loved my set. I loved his set. It was, it was really like a mutual understanding. And that, for me, opened the door to Chuck Lavelle. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, I, I did send Chuck an email and with the link to the, the Andy interview. And he responded pretty quickly. And he was on tour with the Stones at that point. Uh, so he was like, yeah, wow, my my good old mate, Andy, I haven't seen him for almost 30 Isn't years. Isn't that funny? So, wow. That's funny. And that, that really made way for the interview with Chuck. It was really amicable. And uh, and I also now have contact with Nathan East. Oh, uh, man. I I'd, with, love to, I'd love to talk to Nathan. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still trying to get a hold of him. He's, he's, he tr he's all the time. He's I follow him. And... Um, yeah. Busy man. He's yeah, but I'm in man. contact with him now and his assistant trying to find the right moment to talk to him also about the Unplugged album because in the fall of next year, I'm doing a reprise. Reprise. We're doing the show again. That word, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I probably and I've got some new stuff to tell then, you know, so. I mean, you were in the right place the wrong time, but here's the one thing I think you're not saying is the fact that you are really good at what you do. You have to be, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, I'm just saying that as another guitarist and a guy <laughs> that likes what you play. Thanks. And people tend, we tend to forget that part of what we talk about because we are, you know, who, I mean, I would like to talk to some of my heroes, music heroes, but I'm always concerned that they're not going to be what I hope they would be. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's part of my theater show because during the show, I'm telling the audience that I'm searching for Clapton. I'm trying to get a hold of him, you know, that's like oh, an yeah. open goal. Yeah. Am I going to find him? And I'm not going to find him. Not yet. Not yet. He's still alive, so it, it can be done. But I also ask the same question. Do you want to meet your heroes? Is that what you want? You know, I'm also a big John Mayer fan. Oh, yeah. I'm not we used sure. To play, I, we used to play Gravity. I love playing that song. So, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's it's he's like one of the 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 the, the modern guitar players. Maybe he's, he's the guitar player of our day and age. Mm -hmm. I think that most definitely he is, and he he is inspiring a whole new generation. Uh, but do I want to meet him? Yeah, I want to meet him, but probably it will not be what I expected it, it would be. You know. Well, what, what would I say to Jeff Beck other than say, I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm a huge fan, but I'm not going to slobber over them because that, that turns people off. I've learned yes. that from in other in, in industries, like in, in the National Football League. If people oh, yeah. go crazy over it, they, they just immediately turn, or actors or actresses, if you start going crazy, they just discount whatever they got to say. My point is, if you're a musician, we all have the same, we're all part of the team, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think... You know what I've always said to myself, if I could talk to Eric Clapton, Joe Bonamassa, uh, Jeff Beck, I don't want to know what you were thinking. I want to know, why did you put that effect on there? Were you thinking, was it, you know, when you put the delay here or put this on here, were you, did you physically sit in your room sometime? I'm more into like, how did you do that? I mean, when did you come up yeah. with that idea? Yeah. You know, because Eric Clapton's, my gosh, how many songs is he recorded? I mean, you know, it's just, he just finished his tour here, but yeah. in America, I'm more into that. I don't, I don't, I want, I don't want to know why they wrote this song or what they were thinking about. I'm more into that, you know, it what, what, is it you, what do you like? Side. Yeah, because I want to know. Yeah. Nobody talks about that side. And, no. and when I learned, if you start talking to them about that, their eyes get bright and they start talking. Yeah, that's true. That's because you're not podcast, asking. Yeah. My podcast, I talk to, uh, I, have, I have this this podcast called Guitar Mannen, which is uh, Dutch for guitar man. Um, and I talk to famous Dutch guitar players. There I've, you go. I almost talk to them all. And there's one guy I'm, I'm going to talk to in the near future. He's called Jan Ackerman. Um, he was at one point uh, voted to uh, voted as the, the, the best guitar player in the world. And I'm talking like, 60s uh, he mm. played in the band called focus oh I absolutely know that that song focus focus yeah. focus i know that oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's from there. i i just met the guy a couple of weeks ago and 
he's really great. He's he's a special special guy, kind of a grumpy, <laughs> but in, but in a good way, you know. Uh, <laughs> People warned me for him, like, uh, Jan Arkeman, he's a oh, grumpy guy, mm, not sure. Mm -hmm. But I immediately had a click with him. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, do you want to be on my podcast? He's like, yeah, sure. Just arrange it with my wife. <laughs> His <laughs> wife does everything for him, uh, <laughs> schedule and stuff. So I'm, I'm going to do that when the tour is finished. I'm going to. That'll be fun. That'll be fun because you yeah. can talk about that. They probably had no idea that song would be as big as it was. No. Where do you see? So you you've got a lot of things going on. You got your tour. Well, how long does the tour go on now? The one you're doing until right now? Uh, December. Yeah. And then -December. what are you, what are you doing after that? Are you doing what are you thinking about doing in twenty three? Yeah, twenty three. Like the first part, I think the first two months will be a lot of writing, a lot of new songs. I need new songs. In, in the, the the COVID era was for me pretty strange because um, I could not perform anymore. All the venues were closed. Yeah. Uh, I normally do a lot of house concerts, you know, I just go to people's houses. There are 30, 40, 50 people in oh, that's cool. the living room. I just take my guitar with me, no amplification, just unplugged. And I just play, right. I play my own songs. I tell stories. Uh, that's really what I love to do. Um, but I could not do that, I, but I had to make some money, you know, <laughs> I have two children, <laughs> wife, a house. We need to pay the bills. Yes. So I started with live streaming. Uh, started to perform in my studio uh, for the first couple of weeks. Then I'm like, hmm, just one camera isn't enough. I bought another camera, but another camera, but another camera. <laughs> another camera. Now I've got this little live stream company. Uh, so I do live streams for other companies. So I uh, like... Uh, isn't that funny? People want to do like a talk show or something. Yeah. They just book me. I take all my stuff with me in my van. I drive to their office or some wherever it may be. I put everything down. Uh, you want music? I know a lot of musicians, so we put some music on there. And that's like a side hustle, which, which it started to turn out pretty serious at one point, because when I do something, I just dive in completely and I do it good. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. So I want to know everything about cameras, everything about sound, you know, lighting, everything has to be top notch. But the downside of that is, my creativity in music just went yep, down. To yep, yep, there was yep. no inspiration to write music. So that's like the, 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 the catch of the theater tour. Uh, it was like being in my uh, puberty all over again. The guitar started to disappear. Yeah. At the horizon. And Clapton yeah. again came to the rescue and saved me again, because now I'm I'm fully motivated to make music again. Uh, just released a new single, uh, which is doing pretty okay here in Holland at the moment. A couple of radio stations. Yeah, I saw that on your. I, I, yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't listened to you. I'm going to. I want to listen to all your music. I just had yeah. a chance to. Yeah, but you know that that's what I want to do in 23. Some more. I, I need to put out more music because it's been too long. Uh, so that's like the first part, and then in the in the fall, I'm uh, I'm going to do Clapton Unplugged again. Uh, and, and also developing new stuff. And I'm also thinking about, you know, this story about Clapton Unplugged, it's so universal. Maybe I can play it somewhere outside of Holland, maybe. Oh, I England. think you could. I think you could go America. to the UK. Oh, America, if you want to come to America, let me know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, mean, I know a guy, I know a guy from, from, uh, from, from London who has this uh, theater concept, which he is doing all over the world at this moment. So. I need to need to have a chat with him and talk with him about that. Maybe it's maybe something for your podcast as well. You have a good show tonight. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for getting thank back in touch with me. I'm glad I got thank your you. number now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Let's let's keep in touch and uh, take care. Right. Have a good evening. See you. Bye bye. Yes, man. Bye bye. bye.